Good morning and welcome to another video on the poem Ozymandias by Percy Shelley. Today we'll be going through one of the most challenging things that students find in poetry, enjambment and caesura. So what is enjambment and caesura? Enjambment is used in the poem. At the end of verse 1 and 2, there is no punctuation. Now, Typically, the way you read this poem is as follows. I met a traveller from an antique land who said, To fast and trunkless legs of stone stand in a desert. So do you see how I didn't stop at the end of verse 1 and 2? I met a traveller from an antique land who said, I continued on. Enjambment actually forces me to continue reading to the next time I see punctuation. So, enjambment is when at the end of a verse there is no punctuation. In this poem, enjambment is present verse 1, land, verse 2, stone, verse 5 or 6, I believe, red, and near the bottom, right, verse 12 and 13, decay and beer. Now, in poetry, this is specific because it has an effect. There's a reason why the poet has neglected the use of punctuation at the end of the verse. And if you want to get grade 9, what you need to do is be able to speak about the effect of the enjambment. Not just the fact that enjambment is present, that's fantastic, that you be able to figure it out. But you need to speak about the effect of enjambment. So the effect, just like a traveller who moves from one location to the next without a home, who does not have a permanent abode in this world, meaning they go from one place to the next, so n neither do we as fragile human beings. Human beings think we live immortal lives, but anything like a small virus that hits us, can shock our entire body to the core. Enjambment, what it does, it forces you to continue on, therefore reflecting the fact that the futility of man's aspiration for domination, the fact that everything will fall to dust and there won't be any actions that will actually fruitful. So enjambment forces you to move on, to realize that there's something which is more powerful, something which is more powerful, which is controlling you, and that we as human beings are not the most powerful thing on this planet. It's quite fantastic or quite fascinating looking at enjambment in a whole, because every single poem, the effect of enjambment is different. But primarily, enjambment forces you to continue, forces you to move on, right? Just like life and death, you can't stop death. You can't stop you from aging. Today you're 28, tomorrow you're 29. You can't stop that, okay? So that's what we go into the effect of enjambment. The fact that you are forced to continue on to something even though you don't want to. Remember, we're fragile. On the other hand, Sazora, which is also used in the poem, is mid-sentence or mid-verse punctuation. For example, here, stand in the desert, followed by ellipses. Sazora forces the reader to stop. It forces you to stop, and it creates breaks in the poem, representing, for example, in Ozymandias, the breaking up of the statue. Zora forces you to stop and think and reflect and actually take in why something is happening. Where enjambment forces you to continue and doesn't give you a chance to breathe. I met a traveller from my antique land who said, verse 2, the hyphen is also a Zora where the enjambment forces you to continue. 
the Zora forces you to stop, and poets use these two techniques in order to emphasize the fact that we as human beings have no power. And especially when it comes to poems in the power and conflict or the love and relationship cluster, most of the major ideas are regards to the fact that human beings or human love or life is very fragile, very futile. Okay? And that something like nature or time or love or emotions are more powerful, more grand than anything that we human beings could have ambition to actually direct our ways towards or navigate our ways towards. Now, when enjambment and caesura are both used alongside each other, it creates an uneven pattern showing that nothing can last forever. In poetry, my students, in poetry, enjambment and caesura are like similes and metaphors. Whenever you see an enjambment, meaning no punctuation at the end of a verse, you'll always find caesura. Whenever you see caesura, you'll always find enjambment. So take these two things together. It represents the uneven surfaces of the statue itself. That's just an interpretation. You can really go into detail regarding enjambment and caesura of a poem reflecting back and linking back to the main theme and message of the poem and becomes quite beautiful when you actually look at it through a holistic approach. So, thank you for viewing this video on Injamit and Suzora and I hope you've understood a bit more regarding what these two poetic te structural techniques are. Please do like and subscribe be ready for the next video where I go into detail regarding the title of the poem Ozymandias by Percy by Shelley. Now we have finished all the structural techniques, how to approach structure. Now we're going, going to go into the gritty details regarding the title and the actual poem. Thank you for listening.